In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this teaching about the eternal life. People have learned it from ancient times that eternal life is an endless number of years or that man lives forever. This definition of eternal life was inherited from the ancient Egyptians and transferred by Jews to the whole world. Unfortunately, that this definition is not correct according to the New Testament because all creatures are mortal without any exception and God alone is immortal. In the first epistle of Paul to his disciple Timothy chapter 6 verse 16 who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light whom no one has seen or can see to him be honor and might forever amen he is teaching about god the father he is the only one immortal now jesus christ in the new testament corrected us the concept of eternal life and the resurrection in raising of Lazarus story in John 11 25 and 26 when he went to the tomb late Martha admonished him saying Lord if you had been here my brother would not have died Jesus answered her your brother will rise again Martha answered I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day but Jesus answered her again saying I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me though he may die he shall live Jesus declares that he is the eternal life and the resurrection Jesus responses to Martha is the definition of the New Testament of eternal life which is different from Judaism Christ is the eternal life God's life and the resurrection as Martha said Judaism taught that the day of resurrection is the last day that will happen spontaneously by God's power. But the Lord Jesus declared to us that he is the eternal life and the resurrection. He is the reason for resurrection in John 5 from 28 to 29 the Lord says for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out those who have done what is good will rise 
to life and those who done which is evil will rise to be condemned we saw this practically happened when the Lord Jesus stood in front of the tomb of Lazarus and called him Lazarus come forth Lazarus who had died came out of the tomb after his body was decayed the voice of the son of God had recreated Lazarus again the voice of Christ who is full of God's life gave life to the soul and the decaying body of Lazarus it is Christ who will call for the dead and they will live the resurrection will not happen spontaneously according to the teaching of ancient Egyptians and Jewish but according to the New Testament will happen by the voice of Jesus Christ who is the resurrection and the eternal life who will call the dead and they will live again Jesus will give his life God's life to those who will live the resurrection the eternal life is the participation in God's life through his incarnated son our Lord Jesus Christ God had given us eternal life and this life is in his son this is what we can read in the first epistle of John chapter 5 verse 11 and this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son the eternal life is God's life and Jesus Christ is the only way to receive it why because he is the son of God who is one in essence with the father God it is Christ who came down from heaven and took our flesh why in order to give us his life and John 17 22 the Lord is talking about the gift of eternal life he says as you have given him authority over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent what is the meaning of to know you to know here does not mean to have faith in God in the sense that I believe in God's existence but it means to realize the love of God to have faith in Father God and his son Jesus Christ leads to acceptance of his love and to live in the unity with him as we say in the 
gospel prayer you are our life our salvation and our healing now the question is how does man receive god's life in christ which is the eternal life the answer is the holy spirit takes what is in christ and gives it to us he who conveys life to us in christ as we can read in john 16 13 when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak he will take of mine and declare to you so what's my role in receiving eternal life in the Holy Spirit we must first explain the meaning of the word faith before delving into man's role in receiving God's life there is a difference between two kinds of faith the theoretical faith in God's existence and his son Jesus Christ who died for our sins and, and the faith le that leads to our salvation the belief in God and his presence is like the faith of demons they also believe in God as we read in the epistle of James chapter 2 verse 9 you believe that there is one God you do well even the demons believe and tremble the demons themselves believe that Jesus is the son of God but also they experienced his power when he conquered them on the cross though they believe in Jesus Christ yet are not saved and their belief in his existence did not lead them to accept him and unite with him this is the theoretical faith the second kind of faith is when it gets more profound i get to know jesus christ to love him accept him as my lord and savior and receive his life the eternal life this is we can read in john 1 12 but as many as received him to them he gave the right to become children of god this is the faith that leads to salvation now how to build a relationship with christ that leads to unity with him you have to make a sincere and voluntary decision to seek christ the key here is to choose with your free will to follow him follow him means to obey him second you make the replacement get rid of all devil's works in you and have jesus instead submitting yourself to the work of the holy spirit to sanctify you third your life must testify to your acceptance of christ 
and the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. Christ wants to give you himself and his life, but you must choose and decide by, by your free will to accept him, love him, and receive his life. Jesus wants to reside in your heart, but he cannot if you fall of lust and the sin against his presence. The Lord said in Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who killed the prophets and the stones, those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathered her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Christ cannot save you from all these deeds of the devil as long as you want them and you love them and you don't want to leave them. You must choose by your free will that you don't want them so that Christ will save you with the power of his victorious life over all acts of death in the Holy Spirit. Now, what are the signs of a true believer that has God's life in him? First, he loves brothers. In the epistle of John, the first epistle of John, chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Second, he can forgive those who trespass against him. Forgiveness is not forgetfulness, but the ability to overcome the hurtful act from all the heart. As we say in the Lord's Prayer, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Third, to be always in God's peace. As we read in John 14, 27, Peace I leave to you, peace I give to you. For you must hate the pleasure of sin from all your heart. Dear brothers and sisters, you must know very well that if you don't get filled of eternal life in your life on earth, you won't get it in heaven. So I pray with you all to receive the eternal life now in you from the Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. God bless you all.